morning. Well, a quick walk in the woods the day after the 100 episode recording in the pub. And it's really not about going stealthy into the woods, but just having a look for any tracks that we might find, animal tracks, and talk about tracking. And maybe have a chat about how big cats would use a big wood like this, which is surrounded by meadows and open landscape in the middle of Herefordshire. So a good place to have a chat about big cats and following tracks of animals. Um, here, here's a, a classic example of a, of a, of a canid track. Um, so you've got toes that are fitting quite closely together, so the negative space in between the toes is, is, is very limited, producing this knife edge of, of a ridge. You can see clearly where the blunt nails have gone into the mud. Um, and at the back here, if we look at this pad, so you've got a double, double lobed pad, pad at the back. Um, which is a classic dog track and just by the shape and closeness of those toes alone I would immediately discount that as being even worth investigation as a cat. What's that? Yeah. Uh, we, we talk about um, tracking now. It's, it should be possible to find this animal. First thing to do is to try and age it to see if it's even worth following it up. So if I, if I look at that, that is from last night or this morning, I would say. Uh, we've had a quite a bit of rain, and this has been since the last rain. It's got very clean, very sharp edges, and it's still shiny in the mud. If you look at the mud around, it's kind of dullish. But where that print has gone in, it's got a sort of a satin sheen to it, which is saying to me that that's a fresh track from this morning, I would guess. So theoretically, we should be able to follow that animal and find it if we weren't without dogs and not talking. Let's let's see if we can just follow it for for just for ten meters. Yeah. Good. They're coming through there. That's where they're yeah. coming through. Yeah. You can see the game trail there. Yeah. Coming down through, so yeah. So you've got several. You've got yeah potentially about five different networks of roots here. And I would say they're going into that field for the grass. Yeah, and they're coming out of the cover and then going into the field for grass. So yeah. is there a trail in there as well? That would be good. Two points where you, it converges. So where a, where a big path goes into a small path. Or a bottle so, so a bottle bottle yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we call them two points, but um, it could be on a path uh, where trees fallen over and it has to go under the tree. Mm. So that's quite often where we will put a camera as well. So, mm. oh dear, there behind yep. it. There we go. Oh, yeah. Fowler, are they? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, a whole group of fowler. And just illustrating what we're saying about crossing the path. Yeah. yeah. And obviously keeping it out of our way. So. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. So this is somebody not cleared up and. Yeah, not yeah. clear that, but this is dog, dog no. scraping, and you can see it's kind of chaos. You know, they can see you can yeah. see the blunt claws very clearly in it, but you know, s scraping, 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 scraping all the way. Yeah, no so, mound like a cat would do. No, and no. and I mean, you've obviously got the, the the dog scat there. So, but do you see the colour difference between the soil that's been scratched up and and the surrounding soil? Let's say this were were to be a, a cat uh, scent marking. We would look at that and say, okay, well, that's that's fresh. That's from this morning. So now it would be try. It'd be worth trying to find those tracks and follow them because we might get to a lie-up point, or we might start to see roots that it's using, which would then give us information to put on uh, camera traps, stuff like that. And a cat would do something much more slower and deliberate. This is scuffed and quick and yeah. yeah this, 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 this is random and chaotic. You see, yeah. some this way, some this way. Yeah. The the cats tend to be very deliberate yeah you know they're very, very and broader as well and uh, and yeah. broader yeah the forest dean has got so much wilder you know yeah. crazy amount. yes like, it's, a, it's an intense habitat isn't oh, God, it yeah. dense and intense it's, it's pushed in yes. you know so it's pushed in by the two rivers that, that surround it mm. you've got the y on one side and the severn on the other mm. mm. so you get that Population. Natural boundaries there yeah. that, are, that are forcing them. It's fascinating, really fascinating. And also, it's got. If we look through here, you can see you've got this sort of heathy 
open bit of heathy in this mosaic of scrub yeah at the, on the edge of the forest now this is perfect for a cat this you know it's got that mixed habitat yeah. because the deer are going to go and graze there and forage and, and browse on the edge of the of the um you know it's an ecotone the woodland yeah. edge and that's Absolutely. where the the, the cats are going to be Absolutely. patrolling along there. Absolutely. That's where you find the cartridges, isn't it? On the, on the edge of fields yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, largely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, I come across tracks and stuff like that. But I'm listening all the time. Right. It's a bird language. Mm -hmm. Birds that tell me, I, when I saw that lynx in the forest, it was yeah. a bird told me there was yeah. something wrong. Right. Well, I always say that when you're in the countryside, it's like throwing a, a stone into a, a lake. You get these big ripples that come off it. And that's, you hear the birds where they're singing, mm -hmm. they're quite a way away. Yeah. So that's where our ripples go, that's why I write it. Yeah, I go, and when you let that ripple settle, then you'll hear them coming in, coming in, coming in, settling down. And it completely changes when you're, when I stalk anyway, you know, and be relaxed in your body position as well. So many people, right, it's like something out of a, a 50s, you know, you know, this sort of behavior <laughs> where they're, with their stalking, it's not, I find being relaxed in your, your body position is less threatening. Two or three steps and stop, mm. that, that works as well. Mm. So we're going to check out this root ball, we've got a trail to it because we think root balls are where mammals like to shelter and investigate. Well there's, there's, there's scat here, old scat or something, I'm not yeah. sure what that is. But, uh, no, that, come on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, complete, complete microclimate, isn't it? And shelter, I mean, it's often they're more tucked away and sheltered than this, but it's, and it's got a little ephemeral pond, yeah. and the deer have been here drinking. Yeah, you can see where they've come down the bank, yeah. under your feet there. Yeah, and here's a... And a path going off behind you. There's a very big print here. It's stepped here. And it's stepped here. There's the toes, one, two, three, four, and here's the planter pad. But that is, you know, that's a very large track. Um, but it's not fresh enough to be able to really look at. No, I, I, I can't call it, but it's a, it's a good size for sure. And, and I, I don't like using size, as you know, Rick, as, no, as a thing, but, but, there, but there are not a lot of dogs that are that size. I mean, look at the size of that track. Yeah, would have expanded a bit in the clay? It, it might have done, but this is, this is clay, quite hard clay with stones in it, so, yeah. it's, so it's not really sunk in, it's, it's yeah. more on top. They do love a puddle. Yeah. Good boy, Duke. You see? Quite often when people are out, they just have what I refer to as fridge focus. It's like you've opened the door and you're just peering in, they have that amount of focus. They don't see enough. Where actually, it's peripheral focus. I'm watching for movement here when I'm walking. Always out here. And I'm just, if anything catches my eye then, or noise. So now I can hear the birds above me. So that's what I use, uh, sort of peripheral. And then if I do see movement, then I will focus on it. I think, uh, Within the United Kingdom, particularly in Europe, we, we've con conditioned ourselves or we've become uh, unconditioned uh, in being observant because there's nothing for us to fear. If we were um, in Africa, so when I'm walking in the bush, I'm constantly wondering, is there an elephant or a rhino or a buffalo or a leopard or a lion or something that may cause me harm around the next corner? So I'm highly highly uh, aware of my surroundings. I'm listening to every twig that cracks, I'm listening to every bird that calls, every alarm call, every... Uh, I'm, I'm looking for movement and even I'm just expecting there to be something around every bush. Um, now if we were to walk like... if everybody walking in the British countryside walked like that I guarantee we'd see an awful lot more. Oh, yeah. You know, because you'd be looking for it. You'd be... if you walk expecting there to be a big cat around the corner then when it's there, you'll see it. Whereas if you just walk and don't expect it, you won't even notice it, you'll drift straight past it. I have asked, I've been asked the question, how do you see so much wildlife? And my it. answer is, because I'm looking for it. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, and it's a simple thing. Yeah. When, when you tune into it, yeah. uh, you, it's alive, you know, it's a yeah. living thing, so. It's amazing, and it's everywhere. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, but we, we don't see it, we just, we just. It's just a path for someone to walk the dog. Yeah.
and we're going from A to B because the dog needs a walk. And, and, and so many times these days, we're going from A to B, the dog's walking, but we're on our phones. We're not, I, we're not I even meet, looking around. I meet around. so many people walking on their phones. I know. And you're <laughs> like, look where you are, you fool. Yeah. We are animals, and if we're going to hear and see the animals, then we have to behave like them. And they're vigilant, and they're yeah, measured. And, and tune into them. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's the big thing. It's just listening and being and settling and... Knowing how to behave. That's the one. <laughs>